Over the past two years, I've really, uh, out of necessity in my community, these, these companies are, have a very large presence, and so I've had to dig into it and learn a lot more about pesticides and uh, health issues than I ever did before. I would imagine as a politician that you are uh, careful to look at both sides of the argument, that there's an economic benefit to having powerful, you know, large companies in your community, and then there's, uh, there's jobs and there's uh, taxes that you know, come in, and, and then there's, they probably donate to communities, and then there's the other side of the people that speak up about certain issues and you need to, to acknowledge that. How has that balance been for you? Can you speak a little bit about looking at both sides of this issue? Well, you know, it's important to look at both sides, but health and environmental protection trump everything, in my opinion. Uh, so protecting the people and the environment of the community I live in is, is my number one responsibility. The companies are you know, multi-billion dollar international companies. They can protect themselves. Uh, the jobs are important, but the, uh, the, the protection of health and, and the environment is the most important. When I first started digging into this issue, it was uh, responding to people in the community. They were concerned about their health, and so I started asking questions, and the industry uh, wasn't uh, forthright. They would mislead me, they would not provide the information to me as a council member, which mm. made me ask even more questions. So they don't have an obligation to, to be truthful or to show records even to a city council member? No, they do not. People in my community are concerned. So what pesticides are you using? Where are you using them so I can do my homework? Mm -hmm. And they essentially told me, no, we're not gonna tell you that. Or they would say, it's public information, go get it and I would find out later it's not public information. Uh, they're, they, they're hide behind all kinds of privacy laws. Uh, then I started looking closer at these pesticides, looking at the labels. Mm -hmm. Some of these labels are 100 pages long with, with warnings that are just yeah. incredible about health, about children, about fish, about environment. Uh, it's, and, and then the more I looked, the more troubling it, it became. You, know, you find things like atrazine are banned in Switzerland. Syngenta is based their operations are based in Kauai County, and they use atrazine around the state, tons of it, and they cannot use it in their own country. Uh, Paraquat, same thing. And so the more you learn about it, the more troubling it became, uh, and the more uh, concerned I became. And so our community, uh, communities around the state started getting more concerned and then galvanized to pass laws to put in some modest regulation. Uh, in Kauai, we, uh, I introduced a bill called Bill 2491, and it was passed into law that uh, established buffer zones around schools, hospitals, and homes, and required mandatory disclosure and a study. Uh, we passed this into law or the, over the objections of our mayor and the Chamber of Commerce and, and all these companies. And um, about a month later, the companies took us to court to stop us from enforcing the law. And, and what was their reasoning for trying to stop you? You know what they told me up close and personal, like we're talking at a hearing, yeah. at a hearing that we held, I asked them that question, why are you fighting this so hard? Why don't you just let it, it's only buffer zones, it's only disclosure. And they said, council member, we're concerned that other communities might want to do the same thing. So that, that is on record. They're concerned that other communities might want to pass laws regulating and protecting their schools, hospitals, and homes. That's too, too bothersome for them, if other communities were to do this as well. Yes, I believe they're in Hawaii because we have a lax regulatory environment. Uh, we have doctors in our community mm -hmm. who deliver babies, who've been doing it for years and years in this community, who believe that we have 10 times the national rate of certain rare heart defects in newborns. Uh, we have people, I mean, we've had 30,000 sea urchins die off the coast. Uh, and, and no one knows why, but there's this stuff going on in the community. Uh, there's, there's been no direct studies tying the sea urchins to the pesticides or the birth defects to the pesticides, but there is a long list of what the companies like to call anecdotal evidence that there's a problem. And that's why we, and myself as a council member, said, okay, there's clearly a problem. Let's get disclosure so we can study. How do you study something without disclosure? And while we're studying it, let's not do this stuff near schools, hospitals, and homes and they take us to court. You know, and, and the application of pesticides the, is year after year after year. And, and, and where I live, it's been going on for 25, 30 years. And some of the people that 
in the industry will say, well, no one's getting sick, no one's throwing up. You know, to their definition of getting sick is somebody throwing up. Or dropping dead immediately. Or dropping dead. Yeah. And it's this long-term exposure. And the, the, the studies, global studies clearly uh, show that long-term exposure of small doses of many of these chemicals make people get more ill, higher levels of cancer and other liver disease and other diseases. So it's this long-term effect that is, is most concerning. It's also interesting that these companies like Syngenta have sister companies like AstraZeneca, which sell the pharmaceuticals, which are the remedies for the very same symptoms which you're talking about. So it's a perfect, perfect profit circle for them. Mm -hmm. They make the pesticides which make us sick, and then they also make the pharmaceuticals to make us feel better. It's extremely daunting, and yet you got up in front of the shareholder meeting and were able to speak to them directly about this issue. How was that experience for you? You know, it, it, was, uh, it was an incredible experience, actually, to stand in front of 900 people who, who are profiting. I don't believe those shareholders realize that what they're doing in my backyard, they're not allowed to do in Switzerland. You know, they're uh, watching their bottom line, and it's all about money. Uh, you know, sitting there, before I spoke, watching their presentation, their uh, annual board meeting, they're putting up their projected profits, and none of it was about crop yields or food, it was all about, if we only get this country to approve this pesticide, we'll make another $30 million. If the United really? States only approves the use of this new emerging herbicide or pesticide, we will make more money. It was, all their charts and graphs were all about getting approvals in other countries to sell what is essentially a poison. Really? Yeah, that was unsettling, to, to say the least, sitting there watching this. I'm a reasonable guy, I've been in politics for 15 years, I know about balance, I know about working together and you can't just kick these guys out and I, I know all that stuff. Uh, when I first started, I, I thought in my mind about coexistence. Let's just do some buffer zones, let's get disclosure, let's regulate this industry. But the conduct of this industry in the last two years and the more I learn about it makes me believe uh, that they uh, bring far more harm uh, then they do good to the world, and, and they should not be in my community. They should be gone. Right. I'm over it. They have lied. They are, they are causing harm to people uh, where I live. I know that for a fact, I mean, because uh, the studies are clear. I mean, it may, people may not be dying today, mm -hmm. but they are causing harm to the people in my community, and they, they refuse to be good citizens. They refuse to, to acknowledge well, maybe there is some danger here, so maybe we should put in bigger buffer zones. Maybe we should give full disclosure. They've given us this so-called uh, good neighbor program, uh, which is 100 feet a uh, buffer zone. 100 feet is nothing. Uh, and they give partial disclosure, but not real disclosure. Uh, they, uh, within the past year, uh, Syngenta, working with uh, the sugar company here on Maui, went to the State Department of Agriculture and got the label changed for an herbicide from 10 miles an hour was a maximum to 20 miles an hour. So they, they, they were using this, wanted to use this herbicide where the federal government says you cannot spray this in conditions over 10 miles an hour. That's the label. And as they always tell you, the label's the law. So this company went to the Department of Agriculture and said, you know, it's too windy on Maui. And if we don't raise that limit to 20 miles an hour, we, we're gonna, it's gonna cost us money. So the Department of Agriculture signed the paper and let, let them do that with no public notice, no review as to how much, what volume they're using. Are they using a gallon? Are they using a ton? Are there any kids but nearby? Nothing. Uh, and that's how they operate. You know, they call themselves good neighbors. The, the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, just announced that they intend to ban that. Mm -hmm. And it'll take a year, maybe 16 months. And this is really nasty stuff. It, it causes neurological problems in children. It's they, it's not safe, the EPA says it's not safe, but it's gonna take them a year or so. You would think these companies, out of the abundance of caution, would say, hey, we're gonna stop voluntarily using this stuff. We understand the community's concerned, the EPA's concerned, we're gonna stop using it. But no, their attitude is they're gonna use it as long as they can, they're gonna delay the EPA as long as they can, and they're gonna keep using these materials, these pesticides, these chemicals that are causing harm, and they know they're causing harm. Uh, that's where I have no, uh, no kind words for them at all at this point. Yeah, I would understand that. What, what do you want to say to politicians? Because you, you're there, you've been mm -hmm. there, you've been a politician for many years, you have to 
handle that balance between um, having an entire, thinking about an entire government working, in, you know, community, and, and the needs of the people. What, what do you want to say to the politicians who are hesitant to speak out about this? Well, I, I want to say you can survive, number one. You know, he, uh, I can't serve unless I get elected. During this last election cycle, the industry statewide tried to take me out, tried to take the Maui council member who led the charge, and the Big Island council member, Margaret Willie, Ellie Cochran from here. They focused on us because we were the ones leading the charge and regulating this industry, and we all three survived. So number one, you can survive. Number two, it's your responsibility it's, you know, to, to look out for people who, who can't otherwise look out for themselves. You know, we, the, the average person living in a house cannot stop drift from coming over. Only government can do that. The answer, in my, in my opinion, is a political answer. Uh, people that hold office, that vote, are the people that are in a position to make things happen, to make change happen, to protect the people. These companies will follow the model of tobacco. They will delay and confuse and spread doubt and there'll be studies and there'll be lawsuits and this thing will spread on for decades. But the political body, the legislative body, has the power to do it tomorrow. You know, a majority can pass a law. They don't need a definitive study or proof beyond a reasonable doubt. They just need to know they want to do it to protect them. That's why in Europe and other countries that they're able to do it. They have the political will to do it. So, so they can pass a law just to protect the people? Yes. Yes. And, that, and, and it's good to have a solid scientific basis to pass that law, but that's not necessary. What's necessary is political will. Well, my husband says to me that we must stop appealing to the people in power and be the people exactly. in power. And you have taken that on, and I just want to acknowledge you and thank you so much for being courageous and for standing up for the people and for putting health first. And uh, I, I, I pray that you continue to do your good work and that you encourage other politicians as well to, to rise up and, and to stand for the people and their health. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Gary.